This impressive pair of spires rising out of the heart of the San Juan National Forest are the site of an ancient mystery. This awe-inspiring natural monument formed millions of years ago became a site of great significance for one of the early agrarian societies of North America. The ancestral Puebloan people established a large settlement surrounding the formation with the most remarkable structures located high above the valley floor along the ridge line leading to the spires. The early people who lived on the ridge line endured the difficulties of living in such an exposed and elevated location only to vanish in less than 200 years. During that time, however, there is good evidence that this site played a significant role in the ancient ancestral Puebloan world. We are at Chimney Rock National Monument in southwest Colorado. This is an ancestral Puebloan site. Uh, you've heard of the term Anasazi. It does refer to the same group of people. People were living here at uh, the Chimney Rock community about a thousand years ago. And they were here for about 200 years and very uh, flourishing very well, pursue, pursuing agriculture. The climate was conducive for agriculture at the time. Two pinnacles pierce the horizon. These eroding features defy gravity, soaring nearly 1,000 feet above the Piedra River Valley in southwest Colorado. They exist on a very large land formation known as the Colorado Plateau, a high elevation geological formation that stretches from Colorado into New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona. Fossils and sediment records show that this area was once covered by an ancient shallow sea. Geologists estimate that 40 million years ago, intense volcanic activity lifted the entire plateau into the open air. We know that there was some volcanic activity here and glacier activity here, and uh, over time, but the spires remain. We do believe that the spires are probably pretty similar to the way they would have looked a thousand years ago. The most narrow spire, named Chimney Rock, and the larger spire, called Companion Rock, have since stood watching over the ages. They were witness to the first human hunter-gatherer activity in the region, around AD 250. Eventually, the ancestral Puebloans, who had newly acquired the ways of agriculture, began to establish themselves in the fertile river valley near Chimney Rock. The natural twin spires likely held religious and spiritual importance to the ancestral people. The culture believed in twin gods of war, and the twin rock towers at Chimney Rock may very well have been the source of this cultural mythology. Starting in the early 900s, the people here at Chimney Rock um, started living here on a year-round basis, building regular structures where they were living here, and they were able to grow corn and beans and squash, as well as take advantage of the, you know, the natural resources in the area. And then there was climate change in the 1100s, and that's when we date their uh, abandonment, their leaving. Around 1000 AD, the settlement took on peculiar changes. Structures of significance began appearing up on the Chimney Rock ridgeline, high above the fertile farmland of the valley floor. This was not necessarily an ideal place to live. It was exposed to the elements. While it is speculated that some food was grown on the ridgeline, much of the food, including game meat, would have required arduous journeys up nearly 1,000 feet in elevation. Clay pottery was most likely also made in the valley below and transported. Once the ridgeline was deforested, firewood would also need to be hauled to the site. However, there is evidence that the people who inhabited the ridgeline devised methods of coping with life at such an elevation. We used to think that they were hauling water. Uh, almost all the water had to be hauled up from the Piedra River, which is down at the, down at the bottom of the ridge here on the west side. But now, uh, through further exploration, the uh, archeologists have discovered natural uh, stone depressions, bedrock depressions, that we are sure did contain water. They acted as kind of natural little reservoirs that held water at least during uh, a good part of the year. The area surrounding the spires was home to as many as eight separate villages that would have made up a very large community. At its height, the Chimney Rock area may have had a population of up to 4,000 people. This mound is an unexcavated structure. This is how archaeologists know where to dig. Something is under here. It's very distinctive once, you, once you've seen one. It's a nice mound, generally round, with a dip, a kind of a concave round center. And it definitely means there's something under here probably another pit house, family residence, and at least uh, 200 of these have been found by the Forest Service in their explorations here at the Chimney Rock National Monument. So lots of people living here, lots going on. Chimney Rock had a strong connection with the culture of Chaco Canyon, about 90 miles to the south. Both cultures were comprised of a people we know today as ancestral Puebloans. Well, we know that 
Chaco Canyon, being the huge cultural center that it was a thousand years ago, did exert a sphere of influence. We think radiating out about 100 miles in uh, all directions. And we do believe that the people here at Chimney Rock are kind of the edge, the northeast edge of that uh, sphere of influence. The structure at the top of the ridge is a Chacoan Great House Pueblo. It is built this, the same way the structures in Chaco Canyon itself are built. Right here we're standing in the Great House on the Chimney Rock Upper Mesa and it's certainly of a different character than the other buildings in the area. This is, is definitely Chacoan in the fact of its masonry. So when we see this uh, uh, large stones with interspersed small splat, uh, flat stones between them and we see them in a, in a horizontal plane for uh, you know 50, 100 feet, one horizontal plane. That's a distinctive Chacoan feature. Chaco Canyon was a cultural hub and a trading center for communities of the ancestral Puebloan world. There is evidence of trade and pottery between the two sites. Chimney Rock likely traded its resources of lumber and large game meat to Chaco Canyon. Perhaps the most important export of Chimney Rock, however, was its knowledge of the sun, moon, and stars, which was valuable to the Chacoans for maintaining ceremonial and agricultural calendars. We know they were sky watchers, and we, they didn't have a written calendar. So we know that keeping track of the movements of things was very important to them. It appears that almost all uh, agrarian people who stay in one place uh, uh, 12 months out of the year do have uh, quite a bit of knowledge with celestial phenomena. They're used to plant, they're used to know when to gather in large groups of people, they're used to know when to go hunting. You can't overemphasize the fact that the sky was part of, of their daily lives. The jagged horizon of the easterly San Juan Mountains made Chimney Rock a particularly great place to measure the cycles of the sun, providing information about equinoxes and solstices. The regular Chimney Rock people that moved in here in the 900s started realizing the importance of what they could see. But because we, we absolutely are sure that they were wonderful sky watchers, just the regular Chimney Rock farming people. And, but word got out about the wonderful things that they were able to see, and because of that, knowledge and because of that word then the higher authorities were sent here from Chaco Canyon. Unlike Chaco Canyon or Mesa Verde, uh, the horizon here in the eastern where the sun rises um, every day of the year is very very far away. It's, it's 10, 15, 20 miles away and it's very distinctive with high mountains over there the San Juans and using that you can you can very easily get an accurate calendar. Now, if you're a Chaco or Mesa Verde, the horizon lines are close in, like maybe a mile, maybe less. There's trees on the horizons that come and go. There's no distinctive features. It's very flat. It becomes very problematic to make calendars. You can stay on this mesa top and look at the horizon and see the sunrise on your birthday. And you can come back every birthday for the rest of your life, stand at the same spot, and you will see the sunrise in the same location. We know that in um, the other areas around where they didn't have this wonderful observatory that we have here, they had to do things like carve openings in rocks and in rock walls and, and watch the shadows or uh, petroglyphs and watch again the, the movements of the shadows of the sun in relation to these man-made things. But here at Chimney Rock they could come and see wonderful events in relation to the natural skyline and the wonderful natural towers that, that we have here at our site. The astronomical significance of Chimney Rock extends far beyond its unique natural horizon line. In fact, archaeologists have discovered what seem to be very intentional alignments with celestial bodies and events in the construction of the Chimney Rock site. The key point on the celestial alignment here at the uh, Upper Kiva in the, in the Great House at Chimney Rock is uh, associated with these uh, notches in the lower, on the bench over there. These are called pilasters, and they were the support for the roof structure. And these pilasters are lined up celestially. Um, and there's one right underneath me right here. If you uh, take this one, line up with that one, you go straight to the North Star or the North Pole. Um, and then if you go from the one over on the west to the one on the east, you have the cardinal east-west. And these are not about, these are accurate alignments, as accurate as you can get with stones that have been here for close to a thousand years. Uh, people look at Chimney Rock as one of the, uh, the, the most solid examples of the celestial understanding of the ancient Puebloans.
The three northern walls of the Chaco and Great House at Chimney Rock may at first look parallel, but in fact they are each angled at a vector that intersects down the ridgeline at a man-made stone basin carved out of solid bedrock. If you stand on the stone basin during the summer solstice, you will see the orb of the sun rise directly over these three walls. And it takes three walls because the sun's a half a degree wide, so it doesn't rise as a single point source of light. It comes up as an orb, and the orb diameter is emulated in the distance that these three walls take up. The same basin is also aligned in a perfect vector with the southern wall of the Great House. Although it doesn't seem to point to anything of particular importance today, it is very likely that it was pointing to the most significant singular astronomical event of the 11th century. Using the, the stone basin and, and the south wall as kind of a gun sight, you will be looking at a point on the horizon. And on that point on the horizon, at the course of time, the, the great crab nebula of the 1050s arose there. You can see it during the daytime, and it lasted for uh, weeks on an end. The Crab Nebula was visible to the naked eye for more than three weeks in the year AD 1054 during a historically recorded supernova explosion. Dating of the Great House tells us that its construction began soon after the occurrence of this celestial event. The area where the spectacular site rose on the horizon was likely remembered along the jagged horizon of the San Juan Mountains. And since many of the celestial events that these early people studied had a cyclical nature, perhaps they believed this strange phenomenon would one day return. Thus, they incorporated its alignment in the Great House construction. Another part of the National Monument is the um, Peterson Ridge, or Peterson Mesa, which is a long, rocky ridge. Not a lot of research has been done over there. Fairly remote. And have to get permission to get up there. But enough has been done that definite structures have been located along the top of that ridge. There is some evidence that perhaps the important reason to have people living along the top of that ridge was because of their view of the Chimney Rock Tower. Uh, you cannot be on the Chimney Rock site or on the Mesa and see the sunrise between the spires. You have to go over to P Peterson Mesa. There's a series of ruins over there and one in particular is sort of on a larger knoll, and it also appears to have uh, the Chacoan architecture. And that particular area there will get a sunrise through the spires on the summer solstice. The news of such celestial observations would have been difficult to deliver in a timely fashion to the cultural hub at Chaco Canyon, as it would require a multi-day journey by foot. It is believed that Chimney Rock found a much more efficient manner to communicate the occurrence of celestial events to Chaco Canyon via a series of signal fires. There is a, a signal system between Chimney Rock and Chaco Canyon, and if you get up on the upper mesa up here in a local area close to the end of the rocks up here, uh, there is evidence of a fire ring that's a large fire ring. And from that fire ring, you can see another series of fire rings on a uh, a mesa that's off towards Chaco Canyon, and then from that mesa over there, it's Huerfano Mesa. From Huerfano Mesa, you can see the top of Fajardo Butte, which is at Chaco Canyon, and a couple of the other higher mesas at Chaco, which also has evidence of uh, fire signaling. The people who originally inhabited the area surrounding Chimney Rock were likely a relatively egalitarian society. But with the discovery of the astronomical significance of the site and the construction of a Chacoan Great House, a more rigid social hierarchy may have been imposed. We do think that there was sort of a controlling influence from Chaco Canyon, actually we're, we're quite sure about that. We, do not, we don't know how to define it because, you know, there's no written record. But for them to have accomplished what they accomplished, especially in the construction of the Great House Pueblo that we have at the top of the ridge, there had to be some pretty strict organization going on and, and um, leadership of the local labor. It appears that there were a lot of people involved with this building. If you have a building of this size with all the stones being carried up, that takes a lot of human energy, a lot of human mana, a human hours to do that. And not only that, the dirt that was used for the fill was carried up. The very water that they used to create the mortar for the masonry was carried up. The society at Chaco Canyon itself was known to be hierarchical, and it is conjectured that Chimney Rock residents may have been put under the rule of astronomer priests who served Chaco Canyon. The people who lived on the upper trail, which goes up to our wonderful Great House Pueblo, 
they may have been somewhat higher in the social structure. It's speculated that uh, astronomer priests were in control of this location and probably in control of the main cultural influence of Chaco Canyon as well. The reason that astronomer priests uh, could have uh, got themselves to a, a high location within the hierarchy of a culture is because of being able to predict celestial events. And these people had the knowledge of what to look for in the sky. So they learned patterns, sunrises. They learned the pattern of the moon. It probably goes all the way through the stars, um, naming all the constellations, knowing the stars, knowing the, um, the doings of the planets and watching the planets, knowing the, the pathways of the sun and using that knowledge in, as a calendar and it appears uh, as well as knowing the moon. You put all those together and that's a, a full-time job. And it's probably a full-time job for uh, a lot of different people, not just one priest. It's probably a group or a clan that have that understanding. And once they get that understanding, they seem to have been able to influence the rest of the culture. The unique natural observatory that Chimney Rock provided to the ancestral Puebloan world and the astronomical alignments of the construction at the site likely meant one thing. This outlying Chacoan settlement was likely the grand authority on celestial knowledge for the entire ancestral Puebloan world. So we believe that the location here did provide the authoritative spot for the, this kind of celestial observation and information that extended to the whole Chakwin community and other outlying communities in this area. Now, having the fire ring up here and having the uh, the fire uh, communication straight to Chaco Canyon leads one to believe that the people who really knew what was going on were up here and that they exported that in a very timely fashion, in fact, almost instantaneously, down to Chaco, where there were tens of thousands of people possibly gathered in Chaco for celestial events. The spires of Chimney Rock provide a very unique way to observe the moon as well. Like the sun, the moon moves along the Earth's horizon in a cycle. However, it is a much slower cycle that makes it much harder to observe and record. When the moon reaches the most northerly point along the horizon in the northern hemisphere, this is known as the major lunar standstill. And it just so happens that the spires naturally frame the moon during this rare event for anyone who happened to be standing at the top of the ridgeline. As a result, the people of Chimney Rock may have acquired a knowledge of the moon that had previously been unknown. What is uh, pretty unique up here is the aspect with the moon. Now the sun and the stars are used for daily stuff like uh, you know when to plant your crops. Certain stars appear on the horizon at certain times of the day or night. You can time a yearly calendar with that. Um, but the alignment to the moon is uh, much more significant and much more dramatic in that it only occurs on a window of time every 18 years. The sun cycle happens every year, at summer solstice, winter solstice. When it's in that major standstill position, it'll rise between the spires from this location, from the vantage point of this location, at a series lasting in a window of about three years. The folks that were up here and studying the sky, um, having the knowledge of the lunar cycle as being probably, in speculation, probably the first people in the Puebloan culture to really understand it. And then all of a sudden, the, the lunar knowledge be, got prominence within the culture. News of this phenomena likely reached Chaco, and the ancestral Puebloans waited for the cycle to repeat itself. 18 years later, in 1076, when the moon was once again at its major lunar standstill position, the Chacoan Great House that now sits at the top of the ridgeline was first constructed. The common dates given for this great house is 1076 and then 1092. And uh, if you go backwards from the major lunar standstill cycle, it is known that the, the moon was appearing between the spires on that monthly cycle during the construction phase of this great house. And it was built in two different distinct construction phases. They didn't come in 1076 and then build the 1092. They came in 1076, they built for a while, and then they went away. They did not build in between, and then they came back in 1092, and they built a while. So they were only building during the times that uh, the moon was appearing between the, the spires. And from this location, if uh, the entrance to around Kiva is generally through the smoke hole that's in the center, and the roof is gone because it's made out of wood and it rotted out, 
But if you visualize a smoke hole in the center, that smoke hole lines up with the spires of Chimney Rock, where you get the very minimum number of moon rises over the 18.6 years, maybe one, maybe three. It has a couple of variables in the cycle. So this is as far south as you can go and be on this structure and see the moon rise between the spires. Now, the lunar phenomenon in the celestial realm of things is pretty extraordinary. There is not five ancient cultures on the whole face of the planet that have ever gotten a hold of this lunar phenomenon that we theorize about. So uh, the ancient Puebloans getting a hold of this knowledge is, is quite extraordinary. Being able to uh, be talked about in the same uh, frame as the uh, Egyptians and, uh, and the makers of Stonehenge and the makers of Machu Picchu is quite a, a, a cultural and architectural achievement. Many mysteries remain about the people who inhabited the Chimney Rock area. The vast majority of the ancient structures at Chimney Rock remain unexcavated and await further interpretation. But what we do know paints a picture of a settlement with unparalleled importance to the ancestral Puebloan world, a settlement which held the highest authority on celestial knowledge for an entire culture. Jesus.